Well, just when you think perhaps the fear-mongering is going to end, MSNBC turns it up a notch again. This is in response to Donald Trump uh, saying that the USA is not so innocent when it comes to killing people uh, overseas. He said that you know the U.S. has done some nasty things in the past. Of course, when uh, Donald Trump was asked about President Vladimir Putin saying, you know, he's killed journalists in the past. So Donald Trump kind of turned them around on that and said, listen, the, the CIA specifically is uh, not so innocent. So MSNBC's Katie Tour says, you know what, maybe is Donald Trump going to start killing journalists? So this is a suggestion she's making. She says, as we know, there since 2000, there's been a couple dozen suspicious deaths of journalists in Russia who came out against the government there. Donald Trump has made no secret about going after journalists and his distaste for any news that doesn't agree with him here. Do you find that this is a dangerous path he's heading down? Oh, he's heading down the path of taking out his enemies there in the journalism world? Now, mind you, these are the same people, CNN specifically, who called anyone who even talked about Michael Hastings' death, uh, were conspiracy theorists, or, or Gary Webb, for instance, was also assassinated, taken out, very suspicious death there. But anyone who questioned those deaths, you're conspiracy theorists, you're absolutely crazy. But now they're suggesting that any of these suspicious deaths in Russia are actually assassinations being carried out by Vladimir Putin. And let's also not forget, these are the same journalists, for instance, that have been calling for President Donald Trump's assassination. Okay, in a now deleted tweet, we have a Times columnist and author, India Knight, saying, the assassination is taking such a long time. That tweet, of course, has been deleted after the backlash. We uh, talked about the Irish mainstream media calling for a Trump assassination. They actually had a picture of him on the magazine uh, debating whether or not he should be taken out. Of course, they ultimately decided, you know, well, why not? You know, he doesn't need... They ultimately, because they're so um, liberal and loving, decided that he didn't deserve to die. Um, and also, the Secret Service is having to deal with some 12,000-plus tweets calling for the assassination of President Trump online. And uh, let's not forget Chucky Schumer saying that the CIA has six ways to Sunday to deal with a President Trump who, who dared question the intelligence agencies. Okay, so the, here again, we have a case of the left blaming President Trump or his supporters for the exact same things that they themselves are guilty of, saying that President Trump is the violent one. His supporters are the violent ones. For instance, <laughs> we've got a leftist fight club taking place. This is coming out of campus reform. They're training students at the University of Central Florida to that they're holding a workshop, the Knights for Socialism, holding a workshop to teach left-wing students how to bash the fash. It's a leftist fight club. It's open to everyone but Republicans. And so this poster, this Facebook event page says, in response to the record number of hate crimes against Latinx, immigrants, Muslims, women, the LGBTQIA plus community, Jews, Africans, uh, African Americans, and other minorities, since the rise of Donald Trump, they're going to give these series of self-defense clinics for anyone who wants to bash the fash but not if you are a member of any of those minority groups who just so happen to support Trump, or if you're a conservative um, member of the LGBT community or an, a conservative immigrant or a conservative Muslim, you are not welcome here. And also, let's not point out the fact, uh, let's not forget that these were all hate crime hoaxes that have been happening across the country. Meanwhile, they will ignore the actual women who have been attacked, or just like we interviewed a woman who was attacked at UC Berkeley, who was a member of the LGBT community. She was attacked, was pepper sprayed in the face. She's not allowed to defend herself because she, uh, she doesn't agree with the, this leftist ideology. So again, with the fear mongering, they're basically also really saying that uh, Donald Trump, because he's elected, sexual violence against women is going to skyrocket in the next 12 months. So again, just total fear mongering total warped version of reality, but if you're a conservative woman, a pro-life woman, don't bother showing up. And these are the same people, in their own words, this anti-Trump resistance, they want to make America ungovernable, and they're willing to do whatever it takes. So these are choreographed chants, acts of violence, 
the leaders of this anti-Trump resistance efforts, they're communicating the same simple but dark message. They want to make America ungovernable for the president of the United States. They are willing to destroy public property, assault law enforcement officers, and inflict violence upon their fellow citizens. Disrupt J20 advocates use direct action tactics. The group describes those as taking collective action to make social change without giving power over to an authority or a middle person. We don't ask permission or put our faith in electoral politics. Instead, we use our bodies to stop the smooth operation of the system we oppose. And of course, we've been seeing this taking place all across the country. And, you know, the Democrats, the left, they really want to tout this as a grassroots effort. People are just rising up when we've already shown how these efforts are not grassroots at all. They're being funded by billionaires. And, um, you know, the left as well is, is exploiting these people. These young people who are doing follow, following the footsteps of the Red Guards, who too thought that they would rise up and take out their uh, take out their oppressors, and then they would be the new leaders. And then, of course, what happened? Mao Zedong, as soon as he was done letting them do all the dirty work, he either killed them or had them banished. And that's exactly what's going to happen to these little Antifa fascists and all of these people who think that you know their activism is going to put the power back in their hands. President Trump's already said he wants to put the power back to the people, but the Democrats have totally got these people thinking that they are on their side. So what we're seeing is that these liberal activists are actually getting pretty violent um, and bold. Now, they're completely different type of protests and activism than in the past. Republican lawmakers are facing rising anger at their town halls. They're being chased down alleys. They're going directly to their homes. And, um, and one of the things that... You hear uh, democracy, the president of Democracy Alliance, which is an influential network of liberal activist groups, is saying, you know, how encouraging it is to see all these grassroots efforts, the people rising up. But then she says the real question is whether it can be sustained or aligned with the appropriate channels to make real political change. And that is the key there, because they want to be able to channel all of this anger and align it with their agenda. And they said the flashpoint there was... Uh, just seeing how many women all across the country attended the Women's March. Meanwhile, the Democrats, the Democratic leaders, weren't even at the march. They weren't even there showing their actual support. Hillary Clinton, perfect example, wasn't even there. They were at a Democratic fundraiser in Florida. That was what was more important to them, not the people. And then we have Mayor Rahm Emanuel, Mr. Gangster himself, warning Democrats they need to take a chill pill, realize they're not going to be taking power back anytime soon, so what he is really suggesting, which is what we're seeing, the Young Turks, for instance, are starting their own little movement as well in alignment with Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Uh, what they want to do is go, go small and put moderate candidates like veterans, football players, sheriffs, and business people up in these Republican districts. So they are wanting to go local and get in the local office, take the power back there, which is what we suggest to each of you out there, go out. Get active locally in your government and get into these positions where you can actually make a change locally. Because believe me, this is what the Democrats and those on the left and all these little crazy Antifa kids, that's what they are planning on doing is figuring out how they can be in control of you and your community on a local level. So have fun with that. Uh, but Rahm Emanuel says winning is everything. It doesn't, uh, you know, our party likes to be right. Even if they lose, he says, I don't go to moral victory speeches. I've never lost an election. It's about winning because you have to win. Then you have the power to do what has to get done. So it's not about being right. It's about winning. And in fact, <laughs> we've got Nancy Pelosi and Maxine Waters. I've got a couple of clips here I wanted to play where they prove it's not about being right. It's not about knowing anything. It's just about being perpetually outraged. Let's play this clip. But this, while it's only a couple of weeks, since the inauguration, there's complete evidence. There's practice. We've seen nothing that we can work, but I can work with President Bush on. And I'm disappointed because I thought that there might be some interest because of what he said in the campaign, which turns out to be not true, a hoax, and really dangerous to the economic stability of America's working families. What are we going to do? How can a president 
uh, who is acting in the manner that he's acting, whether he's talking about the travel ban, the way that he's targeting Muslims, or whether he's talking about his relationship to Putin and the Kremlin, and knowing that they have hacked our um, DCCC and uh, DNC, and um, knowing that uh, he is responsible for supplying the bombs uh, that killed innocent children and families in um, in um, what is Aleppo? Yeah, in Aleppo. What is Aleppo? And so here you have Mayor Rahm Emanuel coming out and saying it's not about being right; it's about winning. And as you'll see, even in in Europe. A lot of those who are trying to regain or reclaim their political power, they don't care about doing what is right. They care about winning, even if that means putting the safety of you and your family uh, in, in jeopardy. For instance, in Sweden uh, and in Europe and Germany and in many countries, they're covering up migrant crime because they want to push this open borders agenda. We're starting to see that happening here in the U.S. as well. A Swedish court Kit Daniels has this story. A Swedish court sentenced a Muslim migrant to only two months in jail after being convicted of anally raping a 13-year-old girl. Now, the reason why he kind of got off um, very lightly was because he used his Syrian paperwork to say that he was only 17 at the time this crime took place, even though the paperwork that he came into Sweden with said he was 18 years old, but he said, no, no, I am only se was only 17. So... Minors get about a third the uh, amount of time as he would if he would have been tried as an adult. And this is this is in, in addition to the fact that he was also charged with another rape of a 14-year-old under similar circumstances, but the court claimed it was child abuse, not rape, because of the degree of reciprocity. Um, it sort of sounds just like the degree of reciprocity when a young boy was raped in the bathroom and the migrant claimed that he was having a sexual emergency. So they allowed him to get off on that, which is absolutely insane. So, of course, this is coming right on the heels of President Trump saying that these migrant crimes are not being reported, where he wants to now have a weekly tally showing the crimes that are being committed by illegal aliens here. So people will kind of get the veracity of what's happening. Paul Joseph Watson's reporting about a second Swedish police officer blowing the whistle on migrant crime cover up. Um, so last week, there was a police investigator, former deputy head of the Division for Serious Crimes, um, made headlines after he wrote a Facebook post in which he detailed how the country was in chaos due to a never-ending epidemic of serious crimes being committed by Muslim migrants. He's now facing charges under strict hate crime laws. A second police officer is now exposing how the police have been told to implement a code 291 procedure in order to cover up information about crimes committed by migrants. Uh, the code is used to hide all information about the immigration-related crime, including a ban on publicly releasing photos of migrant suspects. And it appears as though those orders are now coming down here into the United States. For instance, here right in Austin, Texas, a man who was arrested for sexually assaulting a Texas mother at knife point while her toddler was in the car he was not identified as a criminal illegal immigrant by local media, despite the fact that the man had already been previously deported following a homicide conviction. Why is that? Because Austin is embroiled in wanting to become a sanctuary city. So they can't report the facts to you that this was a very dangerous, previously deported illegal alien. In case you haven't heard, InfoWars has become the most influential media outlet in America. We're making freedom go viral. And now we are proud to announce a new weapon in the epic battle against the globalist. InfoWars Prime. Where you can watch live, high-definition feeds of The Alex Jones Show, plus exclusive insider videos from the InfoWars crew and behind-the-scenes action. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app and download today. Today, InfoWars Prime is available right now for your iPhone or Android. You will have access to exclusive videos that you can't see anywhere else. And that means live coverage of events and breaking news on location as it happens. You can also take advantage of amazing deals from the InfoWars store that are only available for InfoWars Prime subscribers. That's InfoWars Prime at InfoWars.com forward slash app. If you can hear my voice, you are the resistance.